Israel has eased its blockade on the Gaza Strip. Not by as much as some would like, but the Middle East envoy Tony Blair says it is a good start. It follows the death of nine Turkish activists killed by Israeli soldiers when they raided an aid flotilla as it tried to break the naval blockade of Gaza. Ken O'Keefe, my guest today, was on that boat and involved in the violence. So was it worth it? Ken O'Keefe, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for having me. The blockade on Gaza has now been eased. So do you consider what you did a success? Well, I consider the easing to be unacceptable. I consider that to be a euphemism for there's still a blockade. The blockade is unacceptable in every way. And until it's completely uh, broken, then there is no success. On that day, there'll be partial success. But ultimately, the goal is not just the ending of the blockade, but to have real stability, security, and peace in that region. So until we achieve that, there is no success. Do you think that partial success, as you call it thus far, was worth the lives of nine Turkish men? Absolutely, and I say that not lightly at all because Palestinians die every day and we don't hear about them in the news like we've heard about them in the flotilla. And it seems as if the Palestinian lives don't equate to non-Palestinian lives. I don't agree with that. Palestinian lives are every bit as precious as every other person's life, yet they die on a regular basis. But aren't there other ways of doing it? Nine men lost their lives. Isn't there another way to convince Israel to ease its blockade? But there's no question at all that before this flotilla happened and the violence that Israel per perpetrated on that ship, there was no real talk of ending the blockade, easing the blockade. America was standing behind its policy of supporting Israel unconditionally. The Egyptians were collaborating with the Israeli and American policy in keeping Rafah closed. And ultimately, there was no real talk from the EU or the United Nations. So only because people have died and done what they are capable of doing, do we see any real movement of all? I don't know how we can possibly ignore that. Let's turn to what happened on that morning when the Mavi Marmara was boarded by Israeli soldiers. Uh, we've, the Israeli Defense Forces released video uh, that they have obtained of the event, and we can take a look at it here now. Where were you at the time? Were you on the top of the ship? I was one deck below the uh, top deck where the uh, commandos were coming down. What the Israeli Defense Force say about this is that, and it's clear from some of the video, that it was when the first soldier came down that he was attacked. Yeah, what, what the Israelis are, are not revealing is all the footage that would not support their uh, whole idea of what happened on that evening. There's lots of footage that has been confiscated and is held in control of the Israelis. I saw one dead body before I came into contact with the first dis commando that I helped to disarm and he was shot right square in the forehead and I know this man was a photographer and was not holding any weapon at all. Before they started coming from the helicopters they came from the boats at the sides and were firing percussion grenades. They were also firing rounds which it would appear have been live rounds as well and ultimately they were using all means to cause disruption and chaos. It was an attack. It wasn't a boarding. It was an attack. Israel says that when they went on board they used rubber bullets and paint guns for which they use for riot dispersal and it was only when a firebomb was thrown at them that one of their soldiers was stabbed and when their pistols were taken off them that they used live ammunition. You know, Ehud Barak said before we let out on that uh, mission that they would use uh, any means to stop us and at any price they would stop us. That's his declaration before we headed out. The Israeli lies are continuous and incessant and the ultimate proof of that is that they will not allow the evidence which would be counter to their argument to be released. They control all of the evidence that's being released at this point. But what is clear from those videos, and there's videos available as well where you can see somebody and it would appear to be the first soldier, as soon as he lands he is being beaten. A second one come down, the same thing happens. You know, I actually don't have any problem with acknowledging that. It's pretty clear from the video and what I will do is use Gandhi as an example. I subscribe to Gandhi's philosophy of nonviolence first and foremost, but under certain circumstances, i.e., when you're being attacked and people are, people's lives are at stake, 
You have every right to defend yourself, and I shall... That is exactly... Let's, let's watch but that, this, then. Well, let's watch this, but that is exactly the argument that Israel itself would use. I mean, this has been... The, the, the writing on the screen is, was put there by the Israeli Defence Force, but it's clear what you can see. The Israeli soldiers are being attacked, and their argument is they were only acting in self-defence. Sure. And you know what the problem is with that argument? The problem is that there are 1.5 million people in Gaza, among them 800,000-plus children, Children who have been subjected to medieval type situations. We and can get on to the situation in Gaza. Let's this just deal with what happened on that mission, ship. This ship and this mission was intended to break that blockade, which is violating children every may. single day. Come what every may. single day. But the, the intention to block the blockade, because you say, look, the, Israel had certain intentions before it came on board. They're saying certain things about those people on the ship. What was the intention? What did you plan before they boarded the ship? The plan was to break the blockade and deliver aid which is critically needed to the population of Gaza which has been subjected to an inhumane, illegal, collective punishment policy which subjects 800,000 plus children to conditions that we wouldn't tolerate for one day in Britain or the United States or any other if civilized country. If you want country. to win the argument, you also need to be clear about what happened on that ship. I'm clear about it. We used non-lethal means to defend ourselves. I myself took possession of one weapon, a 9 millimeter pistol, from an Israeli commando, and I took that weapon, I separated the bullets, which were real bullets, by the way, I separated the bullets from the weapon. We, on that ship, that night, had possession of three Israeli commandos, three Israeli commandos, completely disarmed, completely at our mercy. Do you know what we did with those commandos? What? Do you know what we did with them? Well, I know you eventually released them. We released them. Does that sound you, like people sure, who are hell-bent on killing is, Israelis and Israel's attacking Israelis? Israel's